Okay, so you may not believe in Father Christmas, but I do. It's the 20th of December 2011, and um, the post lady has just uh, brought this for me. It's the choke for the Eddystone 680X. It's a new old stock uh, for a radio that's uh, getting on for 60 years old, and uh, that has cross cost me the princely sum of eight pounds which uh, I'm amazed at that's ridiculously low and um, uh, that, that's about twelve dollars uh, for a replacement part for a, a radio of uh, such great age and that's come uh, via the contacts at the Eddystone user group and even the fuse carrier I was missing this part of the uh, fuse carrier and uh, look at this, he's even put in a one amp uh, slow blow fuse for me. Isn't that incredible for uh, uh, a radio of such great age? But that's an original part, uh, it's the part number uh, Delta 2001. Um, so I'm very pleased with that. I'll just check it out. And um, I'll also make a note of the, uh, the resistance, and uh, that'll go on the, uh, the data sheets. Uh, so that's um, Ian Knott uh, has sent me that. So Ian, if you're watching, thank you very much indeed. I really do appreciate that. I'll put the contact details for the Edistone user group in the uh, show more box with the information about this video uh, below the uh, um, viewing uh, panel here. That's uh, 6.1 Henry's. So again, that can go in the data sheet. I've identified all of the test points now, and I'm just about to uh, take some voltage readings. But uh, these are the standard probes that I've got on my uh, digital meter. I'll give you a close up of that. And. Um, that's uh, quite a long length, uh, probably getting on for uh, three quarters of an inch of uh, metal there. And uh, I'm going to be diving in down on the valve bases, and um, that, that could give me a problem. I could easily short something out. So what I've got is a little bit of insulation that I've stripped off uh, a bit of wire. And uh, that'll go on there. It's pretty snug. In fact, it's very snug. <laughs> um, And so now I've just got that uh, little tip that's exposed. So this end will get fixed to the chassis, and then this end I can go diving around, and um, there's uh, there's no real danger of uh, shorting anything out. Um, usually on a, a radio like this, if you do short something out, you're more likely to jump and do something daft um, uh, rather than uh, do a lot of damage to the radio. But uh, it's a, a useful thing to do and it doesn't cost anything. So this is the manual that I got with uh, the radio and um, it's got a lot of useful stuff in it. But, uh, here is a list of voltages for various parts of the circuit. Um, so these uh, positions uh, listed down here, A, B, C, etc. Uh, and then there's two sets of voltages, and it's marked for an AVO and for a Western. And uh, it, somebody's told me that the AVO here was probably an AVO 7, and an AVO 7 has a sensitivity of uh, 500 ohms per volt, and uh, the Western has um, a sensitivity of uh, 1000 ohms volt OPV it's gone there um, so if you're taking a voltage reading um, and uh, that voltage is being supplied by a resistor of several mega ohms uh, value 
then the, depending on what meter you actually take the voltage reading with um, it will actually alter the the voltage uh, that the meter sees and that's that explains the difference between these two readings so your modern voltmeter um, if you're looking at a, a, a high resistance or high impedance circuit you'll read a, a slightly higher voltage uh, than you would do with a, a meter that um, uh, has uh, quite a low resistance um, anyway I've taken those values and um, translated them onto a, a new A4 sheet and um, so there's a few things you need to do when uh, checking the radio just make sure that it's set into the same conditions as the original test spec so I've lift, listed those items and then I've uh, simply copied down those values that were in the manual and I've given myself a position to write down uh, my figures for, uh, for what I so your readings and um, I will make all of this documentation available on the Eddystone user group but uh, right as I say I've identified uh, all of the test points and uh, this is test point A when the uh, radio is in the position 5 with the band switch and position B is down here Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole radio with a camera on as I wind up electrocuting myself uh, but I say some of the positions I'll get a close up um, you may be able to see down there that's uh, one of the valve holders in the middle of the shot there and uh, trying to get down there with these probes these, these are a little bit industrial these probes for, for this job and uh, I could do with the AVO probes I think um, but uh, anyway, I say I'm not going to go through the whole radio uh, like this. But um, right, well, I've just taken a list of uh, readings, and uh, some of them are really uh, way out of uh, line. And uh, you see here on uh, position S it should be 25 volts or thereabouts and I'm getting 110 and over here I'm getting 221 volts where I should be getting 22 uh, minus uh, 0.13 volts uh, where I should be getting 22 um, 0 0.09 where it should be uh, 0.8 so you know more than the factor of 2 difference um, one position I can't get to because that's uh, for the beat frequency oscillator and I've got to strip out uh, another metal can. I did wonder if the uh, radio was uh, still working right after this so I've, uh, I've just uh, put it back on and uh, coupled the aerial up and uh, So it's, uh, it, it looks as though it's still working but uh, uh, it looks like uh, room for improvement. I have my uh, voltage readings now, um, I still haven't done the total uh, current, uh, I have done that uh, in the recent past uh, but I haven't done it uh, just. Um, what I've done is I've converted these figures into percentages and anything that's 20% above or below the uh, uh, anticipated figure in this uh, column uh, then I, I've, I've just marked it with red just so it's, um, you know, it's a good point uh, to start from and um, it gets interesting when we get over here and uh, we see test point V 
uh, we're anticipating something like 22 volts and we've actually got 221 volts so that's uh, that's uh, plus nine hundred percent. So uh, and we've seen huge differences there. And then um, test point V on the circuit diagram. Just make sure I'm getting that interface. Okay, that's the anode of the splitter there. Um, so uh, pin seven of uh, V nine um, and uh, the other. Uh, voltages associated with that valve uh, on uh, uh, test point W we're expecting 22 volts uh, we're actually minus 99% at uh, minus <laughs> 0 0.13 uh, so test point W um, again is on the um, on the screen grid so uh, it looks like that uh, uh, is a, a bit of a suspect there. So I'll flow through and um, uh, as I find things so I'll vi video them. I probably won't do it live as um, it simply just takes too much effort and uh, too much time in editing afterwards. Um, but anyway I hope you find that interesting and um, I'll keep you informed as I, uh, as I go along.